Hi everyone, we are on week two of our 90 day game plan. And I have the beautiful Lori Olson with me here today. And I asked Lori to share with you today because our topics um, that we're supposed to be talking about on week two are sharing, following up, and getting new people started. And this is something that Lori has become very, very good at, as well as branding herself. And she's done so well with this that I, she was one of the first names that popped into my head when this topic came up of who could I talk to that could really help the whole entire team. And all of you guys in the Light It Up group working on your 90-day game plan. So thank you, Lori, for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Fun. Absolutely. So what I want to start off with is, you know, prospecting, sharing. How and where do you share? How are you able to find your leads and, and how do you do this? You know, I know a lot of people say the same thing. A huge percentage of my prospects from day one came from my Facebook network. Um, but I do have a, not as big a network as I need, but a lot bigger than some people starting out. So one of my biggest suggestions is, um, cause I know a lot of people see Facebook as like a private place and somewhere, you know, they just have people that they truly want to see parts of their lives, uh, as Facebook friends. But if you're deciding to move into the network marketing, um, and use this opportunity. Obviously, if you're going to share, you need you want to put it in front of as many people as you possibly can. So go through your, uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of you have heard this. Just always be looking for new friends. And my rule is, if you know them, you friend them, unless you see them as a toxic person, you know, that would be in your life, and you would not want to work with them for sure. But don't, you know don't pass judgment based on what happened in high school or something. So we're all older than that. And so, yes, I have, um, I, I, you know, I did have a decent base, nothing ridiculous, but uh, that helps. So a lot of them come from that. And then just putting uh, what I have to offer in front of people's faces every single day. And when I gave up my uh, other business to do this, it was game on the next day. And every day I was thinking, I mean, I don't throw, there might have been sometimes I throw mud against the wall, but I really thought about what is the message I want to get out to people today. And when I was first starting, it was, why is this different? Um, at least for me, it was overwhelmingly in my head. Why is you know this different than anything else? Um, in a light way, without ever preaching, I just don't like to be a preacher of of not, maybe that I'm an expert in nutrition and you don't. I mean, you just don't want to belittle people in that way, but really sharing my passion and, and just honestly through your story, you know, through the story of, of where you've come from and what brought you here um, and the solutions that I know, you know, you've experienced personally and then sharing other people's stories as well. So okay. it's, it's not all about our own journey. I think, I feel like sometimes people do one or the other. They share mostly only their story and their journey, which you want to include that for sure. But I think they forget to intertwine other things and they think all of the people are going to decide to do it based on the only their results. And some of them have great results um, and, and it's great. I want you to keep doing that, but there's other things to share in too and other people's stories and other, other perspectives and other needs that people have. Sure. Then there's, then there's the other side of people who just show, just share kind of generic things and don't really tap into their own story in their own life and that is the part that it does truly pull people in yeah absolutely and a lot of people feel like they haven't had this great tremendous story so they have nothing to share well it's not like you had a lot of weight to lose when you got started you just really toned up lost some fat and your muscles popped through even better so it's not like you had this you know 100 pound weight loss story and you've had great success so i think that's a hang up for a lot of people they think you know, they've got to have this great weight loss story to be successful, but that's not true. If you are sleeping better, if you have more energy, whatever your story is, that's what you share. And actually, most of mine was because I didn't feel good. It was digestive and mm -hmm. people look on the outside thinking you're super fit. And some of my team members have shared my story a little bit saying they even thought, why is she doing this? But no one can see what you're dealing with on Absolutely. the inside. And Absolutely. we don't talk about that, you know, every day. Um, and since you brought up energy, I remember when I was on a PK call, he's like, how many of you wanted more energy or got more energy or whatever? And we're all raising our hands. He goes, almost everyone either wants it or got it or as a result. So why are we always so hung up on talking about weight loss? Absolutely. Because most people 
all have in common that they would never pass up more energy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So Facebook has been huge for you with prospecting. How else do you prospect? Do you prospect? Um, you do, do you do launch parties? Do you um, do belly to belly meetings? Lots of phone calls. What else do you do? Um, well, as far as finding the people, the launch parties when I first started uh, were a good way to get the word out, really. Uh, I was successful in rolling people. I have to say without holding the launch parties because I was doing pretty well on Facebook. But what I found is I just, I personally wanted to get it going even faster and, and harder. So I scheduled and you don't have to commit to like every single week. I just, you know, it was just me at the beginning. So I scheduled them when I could, they're probably every few weeks. Um, what I found is when you keep inviting people over and over, I mean, I invite everyone in town basically uh, every time, unless they told me they did not want to be invited, which has so far has been one person ever. Um, and so I over and over and over again, you know, they're starting to get that because they may or may not see my posts on Facebook all the time, but they definitely, cause I, you will think people all know what you're doing and they'll send them a message going, Hey, I hope you, um, you might, you know, have you ever thought about doing what I do or something like that? They're like, what do you do? I'm like, Oh my gosh, they don't see. I mean, then I think about how many people's posts to, how many friends do I have that I don't see their posts on Facebook? Right. So, so definitely inviting them over and over again is there's they start seeing she's doing what is she doing you know mm -hmm. so even though and, and I guess launch parties are <laughs> you don't have to call um, launch parties are sometimes frustrating still for the attendants uh, but just don't forget that you're you're kind of dripping on them every single time you have one and there were times that i had because of course it was just me in the beginning inviting people silent parties when no one was there but guess what i was doing while the party was supposed to be going on i was enrolling people who couldn't come mm -hmm. i remember i enrolled three people during a launch party one time during the silent party <laughs> during your private party uh, so in addition to launch parties and off facebook of course find as many friends um i've gotten way better in the past year at finding prospects out and about uh the first year i had no idea how to do that and i didn't know what to say most people don't know what to say uh but now that we've learned just to friend them on facebook and we have hhp it makes it so easy so you definitely always want to be uh you know it's also taught me to not be walking around with my head down all the time and looking at my phone. Um, and when I'm out and about with people, it's taught me to have a smile on my face. And I am a person that can create a conversation with someone standing in the grocery line with me pretty easy. Um, but if you walk the walk and you play the part and you have a healthy look to you, and even if you're not there yet, make that a goal because they will ask you what you do. I do have that I guess going for me that at the gym, not every day, but every once in a while, people come up to me and go, they've seen me there for weeks or months or whatever and say, what do you do? You know, I know you come to the gym or, you know, what do you do? And so then I said, well, you know, they help people get healthy, you know, and then reach their goals. Are you on Facebook? And, and you don't have to be that fit all the time. Just start a conversation because usually the conversation comes up about what do you do? Right. You have the perfect opportunity to share what you do and then say, all I say is, well, are you on Facebook? And a lot of times I will friend people on Facebook just because I've gotten to know them and finally figure out, you know, their name and how to find them just um, to add them to my network. Awesome. So it's awesome. easier for them to see if they're interested rather than my tiny little description. Okay. And so you mentioned HHP. So that's kind of what I wanted to lead into next is when you have prospects, you, what is your system of, of turning them from a prospect to an enrollment and a team member? Well, the basics that most everyone knows, but I, I've noticed not everyone, my team knows this, but when you add, you want to add someone to HHP for sure, um, then don't stop there. Put a welcome and tag them in it. And don't stop there. You need to add some content underneath to fit what they need. It is really helpful if in your welcome, you give some sort of description on their goals and the type of person that they are. If they are an athlete, a marathon runner, a pregnant mom, a nursing mom, um, they need to lose, you know, if they disclose that, you know, an extreme amount of weight, or they just want more energy, or they're already eating healthy, but they want to do better. Because then you get some people to chime in and say, 
oh my gosh, that was me. You will absolutely love this. And if they don't chime in and you know those people, like sometimes I'll go straight to Lisa Maciel and say, I just put a marathon runner in there. Can you comment, you know, and, and share just you know, without a long story, a few little snippets, or I'll go to my friend Becca that is going to have a baby soon and say, I just put a new mom in there. Or I'll go to my nursing mom and say, I just put a nursing mom in there. Can you, you know, just give some credibility, you know, right. to, to those things. So mainly for the people who want things outside of the kind of normal, you know, like the weight loss, they'll see that stuff a lot. Sometimes I had people um, that needed, it was mainly pain. And guess who the first person is I thought of? This person doesn't need to lose weight. I thought of Erica Bitteroff immediately. Yeah. And so I went to her and she was awesome and came in there and just said how, you know, in a very, of course, I know she knows how to be compliant, you know, as well, in a very compliant way, how this has benefited her. Because I knew he wouldn't see many stories that matched him. That sure, way. sure. Okay, so, so you put them in there, you add content, then, then how do you follow up with them? I think sometimes that's a missing link for a lot of people. They pour a lot of people into HHP and then they're there and nothing well, happens. Part of the, yeah. Part of the follow-up is what, what you put in the comments, you know, like whether you're using the Just Cleanse video. Um, I will say since, since we've had some kind of different checklist suggestions, I've changed a little bit of the way that I choose to educate people. I used to start with, um, and we all did, I think, why Isogenics, which is like an 11 minute. It's an awesome video. I think it's extremely general for what people are looking for. And the Just Cleanse video hits exactly what they're looking for. So I bring them in. It doesn't mean I won't share some of the others, like maybe the isogenics difference and stuff later, but I'm bringing them in to address exactly what they said they wanted immediately. Instead of, I felt like the other way, we were being general and then getting more specific. Mm -hmm. And then now I've lost them, you know, because I feel like I'm not addressing what they just told me they wanted information on. So I immediately go to just cleanse and then I will add um, like the isobody mission video or an isobody video. And that was suggestions of PK to speak to their emotions and show that what the, what Mary is explaining in just cleanse truly works. And these are the results. And they, I like the isobody mission one, because if you can't find the exact one that fits your person's story or what they need, it has like in a very short period of time, like five different kinds of transformations. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of exposes them to, oh, well, it could help me with this. Or I know someone that it might help with this. So that's what I start with. And other ways of follow-up, and I think Lynette and Paul were really awesome in reminding us, follow-up isn't always meaning you have to send them a personal message or pick up the phone and call them. So that might put people at ease a little bit. I'm not saying you don't want to do those things. There's definitely times to do those things. But your follow-up is also posting in HHP because you're gonna post in there. So like, for example, if I have an athlete come in and I know that page is filled with lots of weight loss stories, after I add them in there, I'm gonna post an athlete story, something that I can find that fits. Or just go to ISA, uh, FYI, or isogenicshealth.net and find an article, you know, that might, that you could quickly find that way. That is follow up too. They're gonna to get a notification immediately that you put that in there. Okay. And they need to see that you are in the store. We've talked about that before. Susan did a great job of explaining the fact that if you add people to HHP but don't add any content, it's like you just drop people off in the store and you're the manager and you've left. Mm -hmm. Where are you? Right? Does that mean you need to be posting as much as I post? Absolutely not. I'm only posting that much because I want people, you know, everyone to have lots of good content. And if you're brand new, please don't shame yourself. I guess that's the one thing that I worry about. You're, you're going to move into this. I haven't, if you're brand new on my team, I haven't told you you need to be posting in HHP because you just learned how to put a post up on your timeline, right? So we're, this is more for, you know, as you keep leaders. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, other follow up is, caring and adding value to their life. So I know it's hard. We get so much time in HHP, but my, um, it's exactly what, uh, Susan was training on is, you know, go to your prospects pages and comment on something and add value to their life. Mm -hmm. Um, those ones that pop up to the top of the newsfeed because they're so popular because it's their anniversary or whatever. I mean, don't let those go by. Even if you don't see them as a prospect yet, don't let those go by without an easy way to add value to their life. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that way, of course, it also helps them see your posts more, but you just, it, it's not all about you. It's, it's also about 
you being part and caring about them. Because right. most people are going to come to you without really caring about all the nuts and bolts of isogenics. So if you think you need to be an expert or you think I'm an expert, I'm not. I mean, I'm still asking Lisa questions. You know, I still have to ask Dr. Ina. The only reason that we have more information up in our head is because we've dealt with so many more people right. through experience. But when you start out, I didn't know anything. I don't know anything. Okay, you need to know that. I'll go find that out. I mean, that's all That's all it was. Mm -hmm. Now the reason that we have these encyclopedias is only through, is only through experience. So the reason, though, that people are coming to you is because they trust you and they like you. And so they're willing to take a look at what you have to offer, not because mm -hmm. they think you or they're putting that requirement that you know everything up and down um, about nutrition. Right. Okay. So what about the people that you invite to HHP? You've done all of that and you haven't heard from them in a week. You know, what do you have like a, okay, if I haven't heard from them in a week, then I follow up with them and ask them how they're doing. You know, what, what is your follow up after that? Uh, I just had a team member ask me that. And I, I just go in generally, if it's brand new and they just, I mean, obviously the first thing on my mind and theirs when they think of me is isogenics if I just added them, you know, a few days ago or five days or whatever. And then I'll just say, I hope you're enjoying HHP. I don't say, do you have any questions or anything? Because I think it's obvious they already came to you if they have, because they have questions. I don't want to put any pressure on them. I don't say, did you watch the videos? Like, I don't want them to feel like they're going to be quizzed, you know, when they hear from me. Um, I just say, and then I hope you're loving HHP and enjoying, you know, the posts and, and the information provided, you know, there. Actually, I usually just say, hope you're enjoying HHP. Hope you like it. Mm -hmm. And see if you, really the whole point is, am I going to get some conversation going? Mm -hmm. Am I going to get some dialogue? Are they still interested? They're probably just busy. So you tell them you're going to give them, you know, they call and say, can I get some information? You say, sure. And you make it really easy for them. But then it's like, okay, I'll look at that later. And then time goes by or or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So then usually I get a, res if you get a response, be like, oh yes, I, you know, I haven't had a chance to look at those videos or yes, I love it. If they say I love it, I'm like, did you see that I added a video? You know, sometimes they may not. I don't know how that savvy they are on Facebook. No, I didn't. Where do I find that? Sometimes I have to go back then or yes, I did, but I haven't watched it yet. Or yes, I loved it. Just figure out where you're at with this person. Have they not watched the videos yet? Do they not even know that there's a video there? Um, you know, where are you at? Yes, they loved it. They just need more time to talk to you. I'm, I'm sometimes having to tag them again. I'm like, can you find it easily? I'm happy to tag you again, you know, because that page is so busy. So I'll tag them again and say, Jenny Jones, again, here's the video. Because, you know, they got a whole bunch of notifications once they got it. Right, that. right, right. Okay, awesome. I tell them to watch for the video when, I, when they first are. Awesome. You know, yeah. All right. Um, and what I'd like to spend, you know, the last few minutes on is, you know, you, you are a great leader among our team and you are building leaders. So you're definitely doing something right. If you could share with everyone some of your, you know, I don't know, your top tips, you know, you have this way with people of just being calm about the system and moving people through the system and it's really working for you and your success has shown this. And I would just love for you to share, you know, what do you do with that new person? So, so they've gone through this whole experience, now they're enrolling. What's next? What do you do with them next? You teach them how to post on their own walls and then where do you go from there? So they're already enrolled and now they're interested in because they're, they're just on. We don't, like I'm not even saying are they product user or business builder yeah. but you are really good at creating leaders so there's definitely something you're doing right once the enrollment takes well, I, place I wasn't at first I went a long time not being able to create any leaders I think first of all I, I do cast the vision often mm -hmm. on my page so I make it clear that everyone this is an opportunity for everyone and I feel like um, even though I do try and, and, you know, sprinkle that they, that I, I'll help them with that. I feel like more, I have a number of people that are open and, uh, feel comfortable saying, you know, I want to, I would like to learn how to do the business or I would like to, you know, do a little bit more inst instead of trying to figure it out on their own or wondering. Mm -hmm. Um, so once, you know, once I know I have someone who's interested, um, yeah, the first thing I do is help them. I say, say, you know, the more most efficient way to get the ball rolling is to put a post 
of your authentic experience on your timeline. Mm -hmm. I will help you create that. I will help you tweak that. I will be here to help you with any responses you have. Does that sound good? Sometimes you have to figure out if you have to get past the hump of them posting on their timeline. But tell them it's the most efficient way. Because when they just know a couple people, you can work with that for a little bit, but it's just, it's going to be more frustrating to them. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to have anyone in HHP or anything. Mm -hmm. so, so anyway, we get that. And I always have them send me a draft first. I'll say, you know, don't, I explain, don't say isogenics and I explain why. Um, and that's because you're, you're sharing your solutions, not your brand. You don't want people Googling and ordering on Amazon and ordering under someone else or coming up with their, I go, our whole goal here is to get them into HHP. This is the goal. Your, your timeline is created to generate interest in what you're doing. That's it. Just, you want them to have so many more questions in their mind because of what you put on your timeline that they have to come to you and ask. You don't want to put these whole things answering all their questions, like the stuff we put in HHP, talking about the science and all this great stuff. You don't want to put that on your timeline because on your time, then they don't need to, they don't need to be an HHP, right? You're going to make it so exciting and interesting on your timeline that we're going to do what we can to get them coming to you and asking. So you go in HHP and part of that is really going to be about being authentic in your story. So I have them send it to me first. It usually looks great. Every once in a while, there's a couple things that would change such as message me if you would like to learn more about this, these products. Don't ever put that. That is like, A, you're trying to sell something. Boom, this is no longer an authentic share because you're excited. It actually has a hook to it. You want me to buy what you have. So I think you lose all kinds of authenticity just from doing that. And second of all, um, you don't want them to message you. You actually want them to comment. <laughs> you want them to comment and say, Hey, what are you doing? So that you can have so much dialogue going on in that post that pretty soon, you know what happens? Other Put people down, see. Jenny Jones is going, send something to me too. Yeah, send I'm something to me that. too. But if they all just come personal message you, not any of that happening. Right. So, uh, so that's the first thing I do. Then I tell them once we have their post ready to go, um, I'll go back a couple steps. I've done it wrong before, and this is how I had people not posting. I like, tried to explain everything they needed to do on the phone call. And then you're going to do this, and then you're going to do this, and then you're going to do this, and then you do this, and this, and this. And guess how much they did? Nothing. So now I say, all you got to do is the post. We get the post done. Okay, when are you going to put it up? Tell me when you're going to put it up. I want to be here and available because you're going to have questions. Um, and so... And that's great too, because then they have to decide, you know, so, okay, let's do it. And you give them suggestions too. Otherwise, you know what? They're going to post it at 1130 PM on, you know, Tuesday night and no one's really going to see it. So we decide, we give good times to put it up. They put it up. Um, people start responding. I've already told them, you're not going to say isogenics or explain anything on the threat. You tell them, I'll send you a message in the comments. Then when you get to that part, you know, talk to me. And then I tell them, Here's my recommendation. Authentically connect with them. Don't jump straight to, I'll just add you to my private support page. Okay, because now you're just systematically doing this. Genuinely connect with them. It's so fun to hear from you. Yes, I'm loving it too. Um, what are your goals? So I have them ask, because we don't really know what everyone's looking for. They share your goals. And I said, you know what the great thing is with isogenics, no matter what their goal is, this is going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so then you say, this is perfect. I'll go ahead and add you to my private support page so you can learn more. Sound good? You're getting confirmation. Um, I know that there's been some scripting saying, I'll welcome you and all this stuff. Don't say that. Because now they're like, no, don't welcome me. Don't do anything. They think it kind of seems obtrusive, but I've never welcomed someone and had them say, gosh, I wish you wouldn't have welcomed me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just say you're going to add them to the, and these words are important, private support. Those two words people like. Okay. And so they know that no one else is going to see this on Facebook and they say, yeah, sounds great. Make a list to this prospect. This is something I didn't do. Keep, write down every single person that has ever expressed interest to you about isogenics or what you're doing um, in any way, shape or form, because you'll lose people and forget them. Mm -hmm. um, so make your list and then say, okay, I'll go ahead and add you. We can read, this is kind of an important part that I don't even always do. 
we can reconnect after you have a chance to look at some of the information there. Like maybe you want to say in a couple days or earlier, you know, if you're ready. Otherwise, they may not know because do you ever see posts in HHP? How do I order these products? Mm -hmm. What do I do? They don't know that they're supposed to come back to the person that added them there. Yeah. So make sure they know that you're their go-to person. Mm -hmm. They need to come to you. Yeah. Okay, so then I have them um, show some people who don't even know how to add someone to a group. Sometimes you have to go there and explain how to add them to a group. Welcome and tag them. Then I say, send me the list of everyone you add. So I can go and add the videos. So I go in and add the videos for them and model what they need to do. So that it's, I mean, because you have to think about the first post, they can end up with 15 people, 20 people. Mm -hmm. I mean, wouldn't that be awesome? Sometimes they get overwhelmed, but I'm like, it's not like this forever. So embrace it. Okay. So 15, 20 people, then I don't, I'm not going to say, okay, now you got to do this. Now you got to do this. Now you got to do this. You just add them and welcome them. I will hop in and do the rest. And then we'll, then I usually just go through it with them. See these two videos that I added here to these people's posts, save those links. That's what you're going to do for your new people when you go through. So mm -hmm. I do intensely work with them on that first post. And then it makes it very simple for them to save, to know what to do. Cause you don't want them coming, you know, for weeks saying, Hey, I added someone. You gotta constantly go back there and you know, do that. But Absolutely. so that's it. Other than the missing link, then um, if people start now, I will tell them this. If people start, you'll have some people maybe they just come in and say, what is this? How much is it? You know, all of these questions before they've even had a chance to, you're, you're not, not even warmed up, you know, yet. And uh, then just say, you'll, you'll totally be learning about it when I, you know, look at the page and look at the video. It's going to totally explain that. Then, then we'll chat. Just always make sure they've watched those videos. But if they really are, uh, you know, when they're ready to talk, do not start winging the conversation ever yourself. This is when you always include me. Always. I did with my sponsor. I would have had no idea the correct way to answer questions or even, you know, to make it easy for them to understand what this is. So what you want to do is don't even try and answer their questions. And instead of going back and forth to me asking, she said this, what do I say? She said this, what do I say? Open a three-way conversation on Facebook. Yeah. It's going to be your friend, yourself, and me. And you're going to say, Hey, Jenny, and you don't even have to say, I'm going to bring my sponsor in. No, skip that part. Just go straight and start the three-way chat. Hey, Jenny, this is my friend, Lori, that introduced me to Isogenics. She's going to be able to answer your questions so much better since I'm new and still learning. But then what they're doing, and then I immediately say, hey, super, super glad to have you. Hope you're enjoying HHP. And basically, it's not a long conversation we have there. I get it into a phone call within two chat, I mean, two back and forth. Mm -hmm. It's have you watched the videos? Yes or no. If they haven't, we find, haven't find the videos. If they have, okay, when's a good time? You know, I have this ability. And it makes it really easy to schedule the three-way um, call because you're all right there In instead of, mm -hmm. you know, going all over and everything. And, um, and I know, and basically the new prospect is learning the verbiage for the questions that people ask. Right. Um, you know, of standard every time. I mean, that's what you start to learn when they ask you certain common questions that almost, how much is it? Um, how do I get started? Uh, I don't know. There's, I'm trying to think what other, some of the common things it is, but basically they're just simple answers that are the same for every single one that get you to a phone call. Right. Right. And so awesome. you learn that through shadowing really. Awesome. Awesome. All right. I could go on and on forever and, and move this into 10 more areas, but we're going we're gonna to stop here. Is there anything else that you feel I didn't ask that you want to share about the whole sharing, following up, getting people started, any of that? Um, I'm going to guess, well, I'm going to go back to what Tracy O'Malley said, because we tend to make it difficult in building this business. I think too many people, once you get in the hang of enrolling or enrolling and not, um, and not getting much further than that and then get frustrated when they fall off, you know, or if they do or, or that you only have product users, right? And I was that person too. So enrolling, um, getting them paid and serving. I mean, you are there to serve. I mean, there's definitely times in my mind, I'm like, really? You don't know? Like, seriously? I'm so, you know what I mean? You have those moments that you think that, but I'm, I'm a servant, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to make this thing easy for this person. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to enable them though. I will show them the resources and give them the tools, but I won't just 
you know, if it's something that they should just learn the resource, I would, you know, definitely do that. So once you get to that point, if you're even further that you, um, and I think most people are, I mean, almost everyone would like more involvement. Um, and most everyone would like more people following them, right? And right. I think that Simon, how do you say his last name? Zinnick. Zinnick, okay. Yeah. He just hits the nail on the head when if you watch that whole video from last week, he said, we don't follow people for them. I'm not trying to help them out by following them. We do it for us because they help us. We feel good when we watch them. You know, if you think of the people you follow on Facebook, it's because you, you're attracted to their message. You love their style, you know, all of those things. It's not because of all of the, typically it's not because of all the nutrition, every single nut and bolt that they know. Right. They're relatable. You relate to them. So that's part of branding. And if you want to enroll more people, you got to be relatable and you got to brand yourself. I think, um, then they got to follow you for a long time. And most people don't just see one post and say, okay, Lori, what do I, you know, what is this? I've had people come from a very long time and it's a good lesson for people who've been here for a while. I mean, two years and someone that I've known all this time that I'm on the Facebook just comes to me to enroll. Okay. Mm -hmm. And people's lives are different all the time. But uh, tell, and, and Tracy O'Malley says this too, but she's just like, tell stories. You've got to tell the story and it does take extra time to really formulate your words and you don't have to be a good writer. Just start typing <laughs> and be you. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, some people may disagree that you need to double check and make sure you have zero typos or all these things. No, I don't want them, but you don't, again, you're not trying to show that you're perfect. You're just being real. So right. be real, be real, be real, be real, be real. Um, and you can definitely emulate different people and, and get ideas from them. I think that's great. And every once in a while you can completely steal it. And especially when you're new, you may be stealing a lot. Um, but just, uh, I guess I will say probably one of the biggest things, even Laura Stevens, I just love her. Uh, yeah, she's I do too. done an amazing job is that you want, when it comes to branding yourself, um, you got to vary it up. It can't be all about isogenics all the time, every single post. Um, you got to bring your family into it and your life um, and not quotes all day long. And I love quotes. I'm probably guilty for wanting to post them all the time too, but you, you just, you kind of have to vary it up and, and always tie it in. So I sometimes use the tip, like the tip that a lot of times it's the quote that I use as my words to match a picture of my family or, you know, whatever, instead of just the quote by itself. Mm -hmm. So so anyway, yeah, that would be my biggest thing is I just love, I'm, I'm telling my team all the time that I want to see more on this authenticity. And sometimes I just give them a challenge. I'm like, one of your posts this week at least has to be a picture of you and you using the product or not even, or riding your bike or whatever it happened or your healthy meal, so, or it doesn't have to be your environment, you or your environment or your real life situation rather than all stolen pictures. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Great, great advice. Thank you so much, Lori. I, again, I could go on all day long with you and keep picking your brain, but I think you gave people the, the tracks to run on. Hopefully you guys found this incredibly helpful. Um, Lori is just an amazing leader on our team and um, we have a lot more trainings lined up for you throughout the 90 day game plan. So what we want you to do is re after we record this and post it um, on the light it up page, we want you to respond that you have watched it and share a take away that you got from Lori's training today and then we will do a weekly drawing next week with all of the people who watch the video and share to take away. So um, we had 198 last week so don't hurt Lori's feelings. We expect 198 or more next week, huh? Oh, Ooh, that's great. I didn't, I didn't say consistency but I think that was probably obvious. But oh yeah everyone yeah. everyone should know that by now but consistency yeah. is it is too many people do this, you know, not only with oh, yeah. the products, using the products, but with their business too. And you guys are here for a 90 day game plan. You shouldn't be wavering during this 90 days. You should just be skyrocketing. And yeah. I, I know we're kind of over, but it's, it's not true that, that everything's roses for me all the time either, even though it may seem that way or Cindy, you know, and seem that way in the post. I remind people that a lot of times I'm posting to inspire myself. Um, I live, try and live by philosophy, but life, and we're human. So, but don't let, but Tracy O'Malley remind us, don't let your funk put you in a tunnel and a hole. And I don't even want to be on Facebook. I can't even handle it. 
if that if that is your mentality all the time and you have no way of changing it, you will never be successful in this business. People are looking to you to be hope and light because most people do that. We're the right. exception. Right. So when we have a bad day, you'll never know about it by watching us on Facebook. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you again, Lori. I appreciate you so much. It was a great training, and we'll see you guys all next week. Bye, everybody. Bye.